Thank you. Um, this is a, um, a talk entitled Concepts to Arrays, which is, I think, what the, the, the section heading was. Um, it initially gave me uh, horrendous shivers down my back as memories of 19 sort of 90s um, presentations of management training, but I'm going to try and keep it fairly simple. For those of you who don't know, WaveDragon is a uh, dumb floating buoy device of the overtopping type. Basically, the buoy weather vanes around a forward moor. The waves are collected by the out-facing arms, focused towards the beach, and they overtop the device. From there on in, the device is essentially a hydropower plant. In many respects, Wave Dragon isn't actually a wave energy device. We don't extract energy from the waves. We extract energy from the gravity flow of water through standard onshore hydro turbines. How are we going to do that? What are our goals? This was my one question and the thing I'm going to answer in this, in this presentation. We sat around for many years trying to prove our technology. What we wanted was to get a device in the water to show that it worked. So the site needed to be sheltered, it needed to be visible. We wanted people to be able to see it, we wanted them to come and visit it. It also needed to be close for us to maintain and for us to get our data. Proximity to the shore also enabled it to have uh, a very cheap and very easy grid connection options. All of this led to lower costs and meant it was an absolutely fantastic demonstration site, our site just off St. Um, St. Anne's Head. Slight downside to this was it was an utterly dreadful commercial site and was never going to be financially viable under any circumstances whatsoever, which for a commercial project is somewhat of a downflow. We had spent, in retrospect, too much time focusing on this, which is our demonstration site. What we hadn't done was spent any time at all focusing on this, which is our first array site. We basically went straight back to the drawing board and started again from absolute scratch. What did we need for a commercial site? We therefore chose an area with a good wave climate, a viable substrate, as non-dynamic as we could possibly find it, to be as commercially and environmentally insensitive as we could possibly get, and as away from shipping and other forms of sea use as we could find, and nothing else. Those were the sole criteria for our site selection. And we've ended up with what we think for our technology is the single best location we can possibly have in Wales. And I will add, that's therefore the single best location in the UK. Again, a slight downside to that is it's made it an absolutely dreadful demonstration site. It's 25 miles offshore. It's going to be impossible to get to. Um, we're not going to be showing a lot of people around it, sadly. But it does mean it is a very commercially viable site. Now the way we went around this was we got our initial site selection through the MRES program. RPS found us a few sites that we could actually work on, purely based on our very simple set of criteria. We got those sites surveyed. CCAMS have now done us two surveys, 2013-2014. Uh, Importantly, what this gives us is two snapshots in time of that site. And the comparison between the two gives us a very good idea of the dynamic nature of the, the resource, the dynamic nature of the seabed, and how our devices are going to fare in the water in the long term, which is what we need from a commercial site. We were speaking yesterday uh, to TYF Limited in St. David's. We're hoping with them to start bringing in some uh, local schools at the Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 area which are GCSE and A-levels. We're going to get into schools and explain our device and our technology, renewable energies in general, and try and bring on um, the skill sets of school children towards areas that we need in renewable energy and also make sure that they understand the need for interaction with the environment as well. Um, 
as we're in the Bridge Innovation Center, I had notice of my preparation for this. This is uh, actually the very day in 1932 that the Sydney Harbour Bridge was opened. Um, that's on an app for to absolutely nothing. And I just personally like to wish a happy birthday to the memory of Tommy Cooper as well. Thank you for listening. <laughs>